Gracious is the Lord, and righteous. God's mercies endure forever. God preserves the humble. In all our distress, God hears us. We will offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. We will call on the name of the Lord. In the courts of the house of the Lord, praise the Lord. Please rise.
with you. Please be seated. We welcome you to this service of worship at Westminster Church. We trust that as we praise God's name together, we will sense the presence of the Holy Spirit as well as the fellowship of fellow believers as we praise God together. Uh, they're still looking for some registrations for the women's retreat on June 28th, 29th. I think there's an insert in there. Next week, following the worship service at uh, around uh, that finishes around 1030, at 1045, Pastor Val and I will be conducting a service of remembrance for all persons who are interred in the Westminster Columbarium. And you are all invited to join in that brief, it'll be a very brief service at the Westminster Columbarium uh, next week in uh, observance of Memorial Day. Um, we have a couple of very special things happening today. Uh, one is confirmation a little later in the service. But at this time, I'm going to ask the, uh, our high school graduates who are present to come forward and uh, give, each of them will give their name and the school they uh, are graduating from. Come on up, gang. Don't be, don't be shy. And uh, a, a word or two about what they plan to do uh, next year. I'm Noah Nevitt. I'm graduating from North Star High School, and my future plans are to go to Kansas State University and study, uh, study some form of engineering or ag science. I'm Brady Jex. I'm graduating from Lincoln Southeast, and my plans are to go to Iowa Western and study dental hygiene. My name is Betsy Zander. I'm graduating from Lincoln Southeast and I will be going to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln to study nursing and maybe psychology. My name is Audrey Smith. I'm graduating from Southwest. Um, I'm going to UNL and I'm currently undeclared. I'm Champy Gergen. I'm graduating from Lincoln Southeast and I'll be attending University of Nebraska-Lincoln to study architecture. Thank you. Now, you have been their congregation of nurture, their family and faith through the years, and I ask the congregation, do you pledge to these young people your continuing prayerful concern and support as they enter this new stage of life? If so, say, we do. We do. Great. And I do want to announce that Audrey Smith is the recipient of our uh, foundation's Swanson Scholarship this year. And let's give her and all of our graduates a round of applause. Trusting in God's grace, let us share in the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, we confess our failure to be and become what you created us to be. You alone know better than we know ourselves. How often we have wandered from your path. How often we have wasted your gifts. How often we have forgotten your love. In your loving mercy, amend our lives and help us to live in your light. For the sake of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whomever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Friends, believe and share the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. Peace of Christ be with you. As we share in Christ's peace, let the children come forward and any adults who are still acting like children, please come forward for the children's conversation. Good morning, friends. Have them more coming? Really, if there are tall friends who want to come down too, you're welcome to. My name is Karen Hoffman. I'm happy to be with you all this morning. And one of our um, Bible verses is about uh, the new commandment that we were given to love one another. So I've been thinking about that. And as I've been thinking about that, I've thought about all of the connections that I have here at Westminster and that you have here and that all of you have here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that and see if we have some, you know, some, some common connections. So I came to Westminster when I was in middle school, junior high back then, and I came to youth group. And I had some great youth leaders. And I came to youth group with Alan. Alan Walker's around somewhere taking pictures. We went to youth group and we went on mission trips and had wonderful experiences. And if Dixie Strauss is here, Dixie was one of our youth leaders. We went to Colorado on mission trip. <laughs> So those, those were great connections. And then as I got older, I became a youth group leader, um, like Devin and Andrew. They have worked with the youth. And oh, and Cindy Maddox, where are you, Cindy? You're over here. Oh, gosh, we had great times planning youth group and games and just really learning about God together. So, and also Dal Rano. Dal, you were a youth leader. If, if you were ever um, in youth group, if you ever went to youth group anywhere, raise your hand, wave your hand at me. If you were a youth leader, raise your hand. There's just so many connections. Okay, so then I also went to Calvin Crest. Calvin Crest. How many of us have been to Calvin Crest? I was, oh, wonderful. I was a camper. I, I was a counselor, and I worked there for two summers. And so those are amazing connections that I still have and that we have. And you guys will go to Calvin Crest if you haven't been. How many of you have been to Calvin Crest? Oh, my gosh, yes, Aspen. I know you have. Isaac, yes. Okay, let me look at my list because there's so many. Well, choir. Here's the choir. I was in choir for some years. Wave at me, choir. You guys are awesome. And bells. If you've been in choir or bells, raise your hand. Wave at me. Wonderful connections. Let's see. I have a couple of beautiful sun art pieces. One um, is from Glenna Howler. Glenna, it's in my house. Wave at me, Glenna. Beautiful. And the McConnells, if Lisa and, and her mom, if Lisa and Louisa are here, those are connections. Who made a son or bought a son last year? Wave at me. Beautiful artwork in our church. Those are connections. Let's see. You know what? I'm wearing a name tag. I'm a deacon. How many deacons are here? Wave at me, deacons. And how many... Of my flock are here. I see Judy and Harry up there, and Reggie's back there, and I, I there's all oh, there's Deb, sure. Those are pretty important connections that we are growing right now. So, you know, you guys have connections too. If you've been to Sunday school and VBS and camp and Alkalite, I was an Alkalite like Aspen and Sam. So we all continue to make connections in our church. We all continue to make connections in our church. And what a blessing that is. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for church. Thank you for the opportunities to meet each other and make connections and to help each other. Help us make connections both here and when we leave and go out into school and jobs and neighborhoods and friends. I pray this in your son's name 
And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can go to some stuff. Ushers come forward at this time. I, uh, w when I was giving the announcements, I failed to say that the reception following church in Garden Room is in honor of our high school graduates. So uh, uh, do stop by and uh, have uh, some of the treats that are there and uh, seek out one of our high school graduates and congratulate them. It is because we are partners with Jesus Christ in sharing God's love in the world that we are privileged to support the mission and ministries of Christ Church through the work of Westminster Presbyterian. So let us do so in the name of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord God, we bring these gifts before you as representations of the labors of our life that we might show that we are dedicated to the work of Jesus Christ in our world. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. In a moment, I'm going to have our first confirmand uh, begin speaking, but um, the preparation of these faith statements, which has been a tradition at Westminster Church, uh, owes a lot to the teachers of our confirmands, and uh, I would like us to say a thank you to Mike Dempsey, uh, Rob Baltzenberger, and although she had to take a bit of a backseat this year because Dr. Christy Dempsey was very busy fulfilling her last field ed requirement at the Hickman Presbyterian Church in preparation to graduate from seminary this spring. Anyway, those three people have had a lot to do with the development of these young people's faith, and I would like us to give those three teachers a big round of applause. Uh, my name is Kale Dumsey. For me, writing a statement of my faith is like trying to describe a word that you don't really understand what it means. Many parts of my faith are unclear, but I feel that that lack of clarity is what makes it faith. If I already knew the answers, then really there would be no reason to do this. But what I can do is tell you what I know or at least what I think I know. Our God is triune, meaning God is in three person. God is everlasting love, and to me, love is the embodiment of all that God is. I think this is summed up in Avicii's song, Wake Me Up. Uh, life is a game made for everyone, and love is the prize. I would make a small change to that. I would make it, life is the game made for everyone, and God is the prize. The first person of the God, and in my faith statement, is the Father. God is the forgiver and the provider, the path that no matter how far I may stray, I can always find my way back. God is the shield that protects me, and the doorway that leads me through life. To me, the Father is a hug that will hold me forever and a fireplace that will never run out of fuel. Because with faith in faith in God the Father, I have all the love I could ever need. Sometimes I may burst out in tears, but not because I'm sad, because I know that I am unconditionally loved by the people in my life and by God above. My faith, though I don't connect with it as much as I should, is incredibly important. It makes me who I am and motivates me to see the Holy Spirit working in others. As in 1 John, little children let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. So, while I don't know that much about it, I really don't know what I do without it. It is a part of who I am. Hi, my name is Mariah Jansen. A time when I feel God's presence is when I play volleyball against a team. And I sense God's presence while cheering my name from the stands. God is saying, try better next time if I lose. Another experience is while I'm giving a speech in my oral communication class. I sense God's presence sitting in my seat and saying, you got this and take a deep breath. The Holy Spirit is the stuff around me because if I see the Holy Spirit as I, as I experience all trees and the grasses. This is the creation of God. It's the truth that I experience of God while I compliment the earth and the heavens. A verse from Psalms 94 verse 22 says, but the Lord has become my stronghold and my, and my God the rock of my refuge. My confidence in God's love gives me the strength to share God's love with others. I like to help people get along with other friends. When a friend is mad at another friend, I try to help her improve her friendship with the other friend. I do this when I see friends who are mad at each other or in a fight over something that I don't even know about. But I like figuring out what the fight was about and try 
to solve the problems right so they could become friends again. My name is Ansley Sothan. Uh, religion has always been one of those things that interests me, but takes a very long time to click in my brain. Thankfully, through these past two years of confirmation, I've been able to figure it out a bit more. I've gone from being completely lost during service to actually being able to pick up on the meanings behind the sermons. I've gone from only praying for petty things to thinking about God throughout my day. If the start of my journey has already helped this much, I can't wait to see what is to come. When I used to think of God, I used to just think of Jesus, who preached in a time when he was not allowed to and died because of it. But as my journey has started to deepen, I've started to think about him more, and not just the guy on the front of the children's Bible. He truly worked for everything he accomplished in his young life. He didn't stop at anything, not even a death sentence. Even death itself couldn't stop him if you really think about it. He rose and ascended to heaven, where he continued to watch over people. Sometimes it's hard to realize that he did that for me. He did that for humanity. Looking at society today, I can't imagine anyone being that selfless. If I have learned one thing from Jesus' ministry, it would to th be to think about and care for others more. A lot of the times, I think about what is best for my situation and my well-being when I've totally disregarded someone else who needs me. Jesus is a role model to me and gives me everything else to strive for. He even reminds me about challenges and how to overcome them because if anyone had a hard life, he can definitely relate the most. He has taught me that the ups and downs in life are temporary, mainly the downs. When Jesus was crucified, that was a pretty big down for his life and everyone who followed him. But he managed to overcome death itself, like I said before. He is up in heaven now, giving me strength to overcome my struggles. Jesus is a role model. At the beginning of my two years, my motivation to come to class and church was mainly for the donuts. Not gonna lie. But now I actually can come to church and sit down and think about my life. It gives me guidance and it gives me strength. I realize that this is only the beginning, but I still can't wait to see what is to come. Me, or by learning to give God my weakness and watch him give me my strength, my life and faith have changed for the better. I'm Sarah Walker, and I'm going to let Mark explain my picture of God. I, 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 I'm Mike Dempsey. Uh, I've had the honor of being both a, a co-leader this year and, and a parent, but <laughs> uh, we, we try to... Uh, convince our confirmands that this congregation is here to do anything for them. And I am, I am so touched and so honored when Sierra asked me for help, for claiming, claiming her faith today, explaining the, the picture that's there. I can't, I can't give words that will give justice to the picture. We ask, we ask our confirmands to describe what they believe, uh, proclaim their faith. What does, what does God and Son and Holy Spirit mean to them? How have they been transformed by this experience? Where have they felt the presence of God? Um, as you can imagine, they get a little writer's block when they sit down to do that, as all of us would. <laughs> so when Sierra sat down and finally put pencil to paper, instead of words, this is what, this is what came out. And I'll, I'll let the art speak for itself in that regard. Thank you, young people. The first reading from Scripture is in the Hebrew Bible, the prophets, Jeremiah 31, beginning at verse 31. Listen for God's word. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, 
know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. So, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. And a reading from the epistles in the Apostle Paul's correspondence with Christians who were living in the city of Rome in the 13th chapter. Paul wrote, Owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of the Lord. And from the Gospels in John 13, the Gospel reading appointed in the lectionary for today, Jesus said these words to the disciples. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation within each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Every installed Presbyterian pastor has written into the terms of the call to a congregation an allowance for continuing education. As the denomination with the most rigorous standards in seminary education, for instance, most Protestant churches do not require reading facility in both Hebrew and Greek, but the Presbyterians do. <laughs> the Presbyterian tradition also assumes that walking out of a seminary with a Master of Divinity degree is not adequate. Learning must be pursued throughout the pastoral career. Most professions, law, medicine, education, for example, have similar expectations for continuing education. Clearly, any person who is committed to the ideal of learning as a lifelong enterprise, as opposed to simply seeing school as a series of hurdles to clear before one, quote, gets on with real life, any such person would hope to be a student throughout the course of life and that every student would find an inner motivation to learn, a joyous satisfaction in the pursuit of knowledge. As Dr. Clem Bridenhagen at Hastings College used to tell us, the study of history is its own reward. <laughs> and not only knowledge that is needed for one's job, but the pursuit of knowledge beyond the bounds of the career, engaging the mind in a, in a wide variety of subjects so that one can be a citizen of the world. Christians have, through the centuries, followed our Hebrew ancestors in faith in conducting classes in which persons can study the faith. There was a time in the early medieval period that this commitment was rather submerged beneath the gloom and superstition of the feudal era. But with the Reformations, Christians reasserted the need to study the faith, to learn of God and the story of God's people that begins in the Hebrew Scriptures. And so with the Reformation, scholars began translating Bibles into the common language from the original Hebrew and Greek rather than depending on the old Latin Vulgate Bible. And so it was that a decree went out 
in the midst of the English Reformation that no one in the realm hereafter will be confirmed in the faith such as, but such as can say in their native tongue the articles of faith in the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and the Ten Commandments. That's in the Book of Common Prayer, 1549. And we Presbyterians joined the other churches of the Reformation in establishing the rite of passage known as confirmation primarily as an exercise in Christian education. Today the creed, the Lord's Prayer, and the Ten Commandments remain at the core of our Christian education program. Yet, knowing the creed and the Lord's Prayer, knowing all those stories in the Bible, does not does not guarantee an inner yearning to live as one of God's people. It is one of the really ironic conundrums of human life. Knowing what one ought to do does not necessarily mean that we will have the will to do it. This is hardly a startling revelation. The prophet Jeremiah knew it some five centuries before the birth of Jesus. And in his writings we see this prophetic yearning for a time when he envisioned a heartfelt compunction, an inner integrity when the Spirit of God within would provide for God's people such a pure motivation to know and to follow God that Jeremiah envisioned the educational venture itself becoming unnecessary. They will not teach one another. And he envisioned a culmination of God's purposes. We wouldn't need to tell each other, know the Lord, because we just would know God, love God, serve God. Jeremiah hoped for the day when the law of God would be written not on tablets of stone or on papyrus, but in the heart. With the coming of Christ and the witness of the New Testament to Christ's mission, we have a new angle on the law of God that makes the hope of Jeremiah something to be lived out here and now in our own lives. Maybe not perfectly, but neither does the New Testament believe that the transformation of the human heart is only a hope for the future. It is something that begins a process which we call sanctification. The key is love. Everything that God does is rooted in divine love. Creation itself, the act by which God allows what is to become what is, is out of God's love. It is out of love that God created. The giving of the law to God's people, the Israelites, was not to give them obstacles or hurdles but rather to give them a guide in the way of love. So it is that love is prior to the law. Jesus demonstrated this over and over again when he chose to set aside some provision of the Hebrew law to do a deed of compassion. And he taught this principle when he said that by this, the world will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Notice that he didn't say, by this, the world will know that you are my disciples, if your theology is all correct and tidy. No, if you have love for one another. And following the teaching of Jesus, the Apostle Paul wrote, as we heard in his letter to Christians in Rome, the one who loves has fulfilled the law. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is fulfilling the law. Now, the guidance of the Ten Commandments remains rather useful to Christians as we face situations that involve an ethical question and we don't always have the luxury of time to ponder in that particular situation what love directs us to do. So, in our dilemmas in life, we face circumstances just as Jesus did where Keeping the strict letter of the law may also deny a higher and prior principle of loving our neighbor. Thus, Jesus broke Sabbath laws to feed his disciples and heal the sick. He broke Hebrew hygiene regulations and reached out to touch 
lepers. Now, Jesus had studied the law, he knew the law. He was a real student of the Hebrew scriptures. And according to Luke's gospel, he demonstrated his prowess at interpreting the scriptures when he was just a lad of 12 years of age, holding discussions with the scribes in the temple in Jerusalem. But Jesus knew that the inner condition of the heart, a heart of love for others as God loves, is higher and prior. God's love within is the cornerstone of all that Jesus learned from the Hebrew scriptures. And without that love dwelling within, all the details gleaned from a study of scripture become trivia, just trivia. We have four young people here today who will soon be making their profession of faith in God before us all. They have studied to prepare for this occasion, but what I pray for you, my young friends, is that this day does not end your time of learning, but propels you into a long quest to extend your understanding of what faith means in your own life, and that that quest will last your whole life. But even more than that, I pray that when you claim your faith today, you will make a wholehearted and inner commitment to allow the love of God to dwell within you. For if you live with the purpose of loving God and loving neighbor, your life will be a demonstration that you not only know some things that the church teaches about God and about Christ and about the Holy Spirit, more importantly, you will know God. I pray this for these confirmants. But I also pray that this would become true of each person here today, to let God's love dwell within us. And if we do, no one will need to teach us to know God because it will be evident that we do. Amen.
may be seated. Morning. It is with great pleasure that the session presents Cale Dempsey, Ansley Sothan, Mariah Jansen, and Sierra Walker for reaffirmation of their baptismal covenant. They now desire to profess their faith publicly and accept greater responsibility in the life of the church and for God's mission in the world. Thank you, Andrew. We rejoice that you desire to declare your faith and share with us in our common ministry. In baptism, you were joined to Christ and made members of his body. Now you have learned of God's purpose for you and have been nurtured by word and at Christ's table and are called to witness in your lives to the love and gospel of Jesus Christ. Trusting in the mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce the power of evil in the world, do you? Who is your Lord and Savior? Will you be a faithful disciple, obeying Christ's word and showing Christ's love? Will you devote yourself to the teachings of the church, our fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and prayers? With the church, let us affirm our faith in the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. Let the congregation please stand. The words are printed in your bulletin. What do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. And young people, if you kneel, please. Let us pray. Gracious God, by water and spirit, you have claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You have made us members of your body, the church, and call us to be servants in the world. Renew now in Cale, Mariah, Ansley, and Sierra the covenant you made in their baptism. Uphold them by your spirit and send them to love and serve you with joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may stand. My friends, Remember your baptisms and be thankful and know that the Holy Spirit is working in you. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Yeah. And there's a member of our church who is uh, quite artistic and he is anonymous. If Mike can get these out. <laughs> um, he makes each year a stained glass cross for our confirmands. And we present those to you, confirmands, at this time. Let us welcome these newest active and confirmed members of Westminster Church. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Good morning, my name is Mary Bell Avery, and I am pleased to serve as the deacon for Westminster members, alphabetically from Mary Hofferberg to Mary Beth Johnson. You might say we are a very merry group. <laughs> the prayers for the congregation, I would like to share one with you this morning. Harry Seward's sister, Cordy Crosby, died yesterday following a long illness. Please keep Harry and Judy and their family in your prayers. Let us pray the prayer of the people. 
Heavenly Father, as we continue to prepare to call a permanent pastor for Westminster, help us to discover and appreciate the kind of church we are. The kind of church that recognizes and supports our high school graduates and our confirmands. The kind of church that welcomes those in need, like Andrew, who came to the garden room last Sunday asking for help with bus fare so he could go home to Kentucky. The kind of church whose staff offered Andrew the opportunity to do yard work in exchange for the bus fare. The kind of church whose members volunteer to serve as receptionists at the front desk and in return gain a greater appreciation of all that occurs on a daily basis in the life of our church. The kind of church that ensures every member is contacted at least once a month and as a result strengthens their ties with our church. The kind of church whose leaders are closely involved with every aspect of church life and share their knowledge of the needs of the church with all members. The kind of church whose members gladly respond to those needs and give unselfishly of their time, talents, financial resources, and spiritual support. Lord, hear us as together we pray the words taught to us by our teacher, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Christ be in our beginning and Christ there at our end. Christ be in our journey, Christ everlasting friend. Christ be in our waking, Christ in our repose, Christ in every action, Christ when eyelids close. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the blessing and fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us all. Amen.